regularly scheduled programs will not be seen this afternoon so that we may bring you the following special color program. At the conclusion of the third round of this year's United States Open Golf Championship, an awesome group of golfers led the competition. This is Arnold Palmer, the greatest name in contemporary golf, who was one stroke off the lead. Also one stroke off the pace was Jack Nicklaus, winner of the United States Open Championship and a golfer of tremendous ability. Tied with Palmer and Nicklaus was consistent Billy Casper, who defeated Arnold Palmer in a dramatic playoff in this tournament a year ago. One stroke ahead of the big three of golf was this young man, Marty Fleckman, who achieved the incredible by becoming the first amateur to lead this tournament after the third round since Johnny Goodman in 1933. ABC Sports proudly presents exclusive coverage of the concluding round of this, the most prestigious tournament in all of golf. The 67th United States Open Championship. This is the clubhouse at historic Baldesroll Golf Club in Springfield, New Jersey. This course, named after the old Dutch farmer Baldesroll, who owned the land in this area in the 19th century, is now hosted by the United States Open Golf Championships and is truly acknowledged as one of the world's greatest tests of golfing ability. ABC's exclusive color coverage of the United States Open Championship is brought to you by your Mercury dealer, home of the better idea cars like the new Mercury Cougar car of the year. By Goodyear, this year as in every year for 50 consecutive years, more people ride on Goodyear tires than on any other kind. And by Humble Oil and Refining Company and the Tiger team at your happy motoring station or the Tiger as an extra punch. As we look up the 18th fairway, supered over it is this fact that Jack Nicklaus, with a tremendous front nine of going out in 31, now leads Arnold Palmer and Lee Trevino by four shots. And Marty Fleckman is three over, trailing by six shots on Jack Nicklaus. Marty started out badly, the amateur that led after the third round, but Jack Nicklaus is having a round like he had here on a practice day earlier in the week. The 1967 United States Open Golf Championship from Baldus Raw Golf Club continues in just a moment. The United States Open is one of nine championships conducted by the United States Golf Association, the governing body of golf. The nine championships cover all levels of golf, from junior girls and boys, public links players and seniors, to the class of golfer you are watching today. Prize money for professional golfers began with the first Open Championship of the United States Golf Association back in 1895. The winner, incidentally, was a 19-year-old uh, youngster named Horace Rawlings, and he won in Newport, Rhode Island, receiving $150, a medal that was valued at $50. There is quite a comparison, as this year, the winner will get $30,000, the man that finishes second will get fifteen. dollars When Byron Nelson won in 1939, the paycheck for the winner was something like $6,000. Uh, things have changed. Byron hasn't. He's still the lovely guy and the great golfer and expert, and we're glad to have you with us. Thank you very much, Chris. This is really being an exciting tournament all the way through, and Jack Nicklaus is certainly creating more excitement today than what we've had all of all the tournament, excepting possibly the expect exception of the great play of Marty Fleckman. Byron, he has, with two birdies on 17 and 18 yesterday afternoon, and now having played through nine today, he has birdied seven of the last 11 holes that he has played here at one of the stern tests of golf at Baldus Raw. Yes, this course is really great. It's about 7,000 yards long. The players will say it's the fairest, fairest test of golf that they've seen. The greens are great. The fairways are 30 to 40 yards wide. And uh, the whole of the tournament is just, everything has just been going great. All 18 holes are great. One that is particularly uh, the favorite of many, the world over, is the fourth hole here, 194 yards long, a par three. And fortunately, with our great color camera complement that we have here, largest ever in the history of television, we can show you play on the fourth hole earlier, earlier today of the big four, amateur Marty Fleckman and, of course, Casper, and Nicholas, and Palmer. This is Jack Nicholas and Byron today. They were using uh, the back tee area. Yes, it was 194 yards long. The pin, the tee's at the back. The pin's in the back center 
of the green. 194 yards, I'm sure that Nicholas probably went at this hole today with probably a four iron as strong as he's hitting the ball today. The fourth hole is over water. It is uh, closely guarded by beautiful traps, and today the traps are closely guarded by thousands of spectators. There's the shot. You can watch. You can see where this ball lands. That's, this is the hole that started him hot today. There it is, only about five feet from the hole, 194 yards over this water. A magnificent hole with a great gallery in the background, in, including three traps. That was one of the shots, pinpoint accuracy to the fourth green, an elevated green after water, and 194 yards away that started him in his rolling on a four-stroke advantage as we came on the air. Now Arnold Palmer, who was tied for second with Casper and Nicholas with fourth round play getting underway. And watch what uh, beautiful action that he puts on this ball here. You see it on the green, just a little bit to the left of the hole, about 18 feet away, putting right straight up the hill. Nicholas has put his on about five feet. There is a beautiful picture to see of this great fourth hole. Nicholas and Palmer at this moment are uh, have just completed the uh, tenth hole, and uh, Nicholas has bogeyed it, so he now leads Palmer by three shots. Palmer's putt for a birdie two earlier on the fourth hole. Palmer is really wanting these, uh, needing a putt at this point. He's played beautifully, but has not been able to hold many of these putts in this championship, and this is no exception. He goes by a little bit. It doesn't, the hole doesn't show there, but he's skidded past the hole a little bit. The very same two men that when Jack Nicklaus won the Open Championship in 1962, he won it by uh, defeating Arnold Palmer in a playoff. Yes, that was a great playoff at Oakmont uh, in Pennsylvania. A very great golf course, and two, of course, of the all-time great players. Very little wind here today. It is hot and humid. It is overcast, some threat of showers. Now, you know, it's already taken the practice putt here. He has this putt for a par three, keeping the putter real smooth and real low to the ground. And in three, starting with all four, four, first four holes, all pars. Now this is Nicholas Putt for a birdie two. It will start him on the surge in which he is still doing at this moment. Made it look very easy. It looks easy when they go in that way, Chris. And uh, the fact that he's using a metal putter, a rocker putter painted white, will cause most everybody watching our telecast to immediately start painting their putters white. <laughs> yes. This is the next group now playing to immediately behind. Here's Billy Casper on the fourth tee, defending champion. He, hook, he hooks the ball into the trap, left of the green. Billy's was playing absolute super golf and yesterday up until the 15th hole, and then he said he lost his concentration. Another great picture of this hole, and he finished in three bogeys in the last four holes, which is rather an unusual thing for Billy to do because he's one of the steadiest players on the tour. And at the moment, he is trailing the leader, Jack Nicklaus, by four strokes, Byron. Yes, that is a big uh, lead for Jack. Now you see Marty Fleckman getting ready to play to the uh, fourth green. Of course, this happened uh, a little earlier as Jack Nicholas and Arnold Palmer are playing the 11th hole. Billy Casper is out there, all the contenders, and when they come into our camera range at the 13th hole, we'll be bringing you all the action live and in color. And later, uh, the folks in Great Britain will have an opportunity to see our telecast live and in color on the satellite and a delayed telecast to Japan. Yes, he, he hooked this ball. Watch the people move. He hooked the ball back into the crowd over the trees, into the trees and into the crowd. He started off very shaky today, but it's a difficult job to lead this championship for a man who's never even played any before. This is the second round that he has led this tournament. And, of course, having led after 54 holes, made him the first amateur to have accomplished that since Johnny Goodman did it in 1933. It's an odd thing. It's the last uh, 
Uh, look, at, look at this shot. He has to place it down over this high bank, pin cut very close to him. The, bird, the pin is very close to that edge, back edge of the green. He's under the tree. But as you see, he played it very beautifully. Left the ball, uh, as you can see, about 12 feet from the hole. Very well executed and played shot. Marty Fleckman, 54-hole leader, starting out shaky today. He did two of the previous three rounds. Billy Casper, as you see, playing out of the sand trap, stopped the ball very quickly. He's, his bunker play here has been exceptionally good, though. He likes this sand. Some of the balls say it's a little very light, and the ball comes out fast. But Casper has played the ball very, very well. And he, like the other 66 or 65 players today, have raved considerably about Baldus Raw. Split screen, you see Fleckman on the left, and on the right, Jack Nicholas at five, Fleckman at three. Fleckman need this for par, as you saw, he got it. That uh, set him down considerably. Now then, you see, you see Nicholas putting here for a birdie on the fifth hole now. This is a, will be the second birdie in a row for Nicholas. There he goes. Birdies at three, four, and five for Jack Nicholas, and seven in the last 12 holes, uh, counting yesterday's two finishing holes at 17 and 18. Now Billy Casper. You know, when birdies start coming, they come in bunches, Chris. So Cas Cas Casper missed his putt and giving him a bogey four on the fourth hole. Well, earlier, Ben Hogan finished 72 holes of play. He is in at 12 over par with a round today of 72. From Baldus Royal Golf Club here in Springfield, New Jersey, the 67th United States Open continues after this message. We're back at the United States Open at the Baltimore Golf Club in Springfield, New Jersey, and this is action now on the 11th hole. You are seeing, as I believe Chris mentioned earlier, more action than we or anybody else has ever been able to show you in a major golf championship because of the tremendous number of color cameras we have around the course. Now, Arnold Palmer has put a shot in the rough, I believe, on the 11th hole there. There you see the leaders, Jack Nicklaus minus two now. Arnold Palmer three shots back at plus one. Then we have Lee Trevino, Don January, and Bill Casper. And just a moment ago, we saw Gene Beeman get a birdie at the 13th. He has moved into a tie with Arnold Palmer. This is the 11th green. Jack Nicholas wearing the eye shade that he has adopted in recent months. Arnold Palmer bareheaded as usual. I walked in this gallery for a while earlier today, by the way, and I've been in a lot of Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicholas's galleries. I've never seen one with the tremendous enthusiasm and vitality to it that this one has. The usual signs of Arnie's Army and uh, such other things as Hillside for Arnie and Dayton for Arnie. But this is Jack Nicholas, the man leading the championship and what golf he's been playing today. Lost a shot on the uh, last hole, so he's two under for the championship. And two under on today's round. Nicholas surveying his putt for the birdie. And in that tremendous gallery, I think the cutest line I heard was a young lady about 18 years old with her boyfriend. She looked around and listened to them yelling, Go, Arnie, and she said, doesn't Jack have an army? <laughs> Deliberate as always, but playing at good speed today, Jack Nicholas. not fall. 
And Byron, this could really develop into something yet, huh? Yes, I'm telling you, you know, last year we thought a lot of things were going to happen, and sure enough, they did. The last nine holes, the Open last year. That's right. Well, Jack Nicholas has his par on the 11th hole, and now Arnold Palmer. Last year we sure did see it with Arnold Palmer leading by seven with nine holes to go, ended up in the famous tie with Bill Casper, and, of course, lost the playoff the next day. Arnold at plus one now, three shots behind Jack Nicholas. The threat of rain becoming a little more possible all the time. It's quite dark and overcast and damp. And there is Arnold Palmer's birdie on the 11th hole. He has moved one shot closer to Jack Nicholas. The lead is now down to two. Just about five minutes ago, it was four shots. And that's the way things happen in this exciting game of tournament golf. Jack, Jack Nicholas minus two, Arnold Palmer even, and Dean Beeman plus one. And here he is right now on the 14th fairway, just off the 14th fairway, hitting his approach shot on this par four, 392-yard hole. And it looks like Dean has found sand. So trouble for the man in third place right now. There's more of the colorful excitement to come in the 1967 U.S. Open Golf Championship in just a moment. We're back again at the U.S. Open. Baldestraw Golf Club, Springfield, New Jersey. There are the leaders. Arnold Palmer, we are informed, did not get a birdie. That long putt was for a par he had to make on the 11th hole. So he still tra trails Jack Nicholas by three. So does Dean Beeman, who is on the 14th hole right now. Then you see Don January, Billy Casper, and the surprising Lee Trevino, a 28-year-old club pro from El Paso, Texas, right up there with the big boys. And that is Trevino up on the 15th hole. That was his third shot on the par four, so he could pick up another bogey here unless he makes that putt. That's Lee Trevino. All dressed up in green shirt and brown pants for the final round of the U.S. Open. Last year, he won $600 in total prize money. He was 15th in the Mexican Open was his best finish. Now we're back on the 14th hole. This is Dean Beeman, former amateur champion, turned pro just on April 11th, playing only his second tournament as a professional. Nice two, though. He'll have to get this close. That's the situation. And it's come up very short, Byron. Yes, uh, Jim, as you remember last year, unfortunately for him, at the old, at the amateur championship at uh, Marion, he is bunker play the last two or three holes is what cost him the championship. That certainly is true. And here at... Uh, could be doing it again. He'll have a big, long 40-foot putt for his par four on this 14th hole. Playing with Beeman is Don January, who's also in contention at two over par. There's Don, a veteran professional. He's never won any of the really big ones, but a lot of tournaments along the trail. Dean has been hitting the ball much further in this championship than ever before, and he says the reason is that last November or December, he had an operation on his right hand, and he said he's been much stronger and much longer ever since then. He also says he finds a lot less pressure on him as a professional now that he's playing for money. Here is Lee Trevino now on the 15th with this important putt for a par. Oh, didn't quite get it, and so he falls now down to three over. He was only one over two holes ago, but he bogeyed the last two now. And he's going to take his time with this one. A bogey five for Lee Trevino of El Paso. Byron, you have more of your Texans on this golf tour than you could possibly count. Now 14 again. Dean Beeman makes a big long putt for a par four. That Trevino, uh, Jim, is uh, one of our top players in the state of Texas. Now has won the Texas PGA Championship. And now Beeman. He's going to have another putt. He now is 
go to plus two for the championship if he makes this putt. That would put him one over on today's round. First came to prominence as a collegiate golfer at the University of Maryland. the bogey five for Dean Beeman. Puts him at plus two now in a tie with the man he's playing with, Don January. For third place behind Jack Nicholas and Arnold Palmer. We'll be seeing them very soon. Nicholas two under for the championship. Palmer one over. Don January could move into a tie with Arnold Palmer for a second place if he could sink this putt for a bird on the 14th hole. No. Everybody seems to be trying to make sure they don't leave it short, and a lot of them are going past pretty far, Byron. Yes, the greens are very slick today. They mowed them very close this morning. The ball is really rolling. There is the par four for Don January, keeping him in a tie for third place with Dean Beeman. Let's move on now to the 15th tee, reporting that hole for us, our colleague Bill Fleming. Thank you very much, Jim. The 419 yard 15th has been the second most difficult hole on the golf course. As you see, it's a straightaway shot through a sluice of trees to the target area, which is uh, lined on both sides by huge traps. And as you can see, the fairway in there is narrowed to about 40 yards. Then, guarding an elevated green from behind, you see it as we see it. These two big traps on the left and three on the right guard the green. Every one of these holes at Baltus Roll has uh, a significant phrase in the official program about it. Uh, this particular hole is described in the program as lovely to look at, delightful to play, and heaven if you par it. It's been played in six tenths of a stroke over par according to our IBM Sports Information Center during this tournament. Only the sixth hole has played harder of the 18 on this course. This is the way January and Beeman have done on the 15th. Now there, the average in the field, 4.4 through the 54 holes. And uh, January, as you can see, has that one bogey. It's been an interesting hole because it's been kind of a turning point. Uh, Nicholas got a bogey here yesterday. Fleckman got a bogey here. Sorry, that bouncer, please. Well, it's on the right side in the rough, and as you could hear uh, Don January say, please be short of that bunker because it is very treacherous to try to play into this hole. It's a good four iron shot, you see, from the fairway uh, from that distance. And now Dean Beeman, who's not a particularly long player, but who has just been superb in his long iron play. shot and it is it's rolling right down the middle of the fairway and he will have about 175 yards carry into this beautiful elevated green we'll be back with more of the united states open championship at baldus roll golf club at springfield new jersey we take time out for this message
Here's a look now at the swing of Dean Beeman. Let's call in Byron Nelson. Byron, here's, you want to comment on? Yes, here's Dean Beeman. I want you to watch one thing. There's been a lot of controversy to talk about keeping a left heel on the ground. You notice how much his left heel comes off because he takes such a full wind-up. You can see the position there. He's holding it right at the top of the swing. The left knee is in toward the right on his back swing. Now, from this point, watch how the left side, the left heel will come back down. The left side pull, go through out of the way so the hands can be released the bottom of the swing. And then, of course, from there, he moves on through, lets out the air, and he's really twist and turn, following the club down the ball, down the fairway. Weight well over onto his left side. This is the first USGA Open that he's played in as a professional. Having turned professional this year, his first professional tournament was, uh, and he won some money, was the Colonial. And uh, he started off this Open by eagling the first hole. Here's January, whose tee shot caught the rough. He's about 185 yards from this green, and he hits what looks to be a fine shot. Good, strong player, and look at that. From the rough, in his position, it had to be a brilliant shot. He's not more than 12 feet from the pin, and as you could see, he had a great deal of backspin on it, and Byron, that in itself is quite a feat from that high rough. It certainly is, but Don's a great player. He has a nice full arc, and you really stay down and through that shot. I think we can see here, too, we said earlier about the superb iron play of Beeman. Watch him uh, take a bead on this shot, about 170 yards in. It looks to be like about a four iron. It doesn't look like a particularly good shot, however. Not just a little bit off to the left, and he's got about a 25-foot putt. Jim McKay. This is Jack Nicholas addressing his shot, his second shot on the 13th hole. He had a tremendous fine tee shot. He can come straight in at the flag. Arnold Palmer is in the rough, however, and has yet to hit. Big divot he took with that short iron shot, and a lovely shot. Look at that. Nicholas now with about a three-footer for a birdie three here. Now it really begins. Less than six holes to go. And only one of these fathers can have the happiest father's day of all. That check for $30,000. And there's the graphic of this hole. 392 yards long, par four. Here is Arnold. He's about five feet in the rough. It's not too long. It's not too bad a lie. It's come up over the trap. And it's a good cut, maybe a little long. <laughs> On the putting surface, but long, about 20 feet for his birdie three. And there's more of the colorful excitement to come in the 1967 U.S. Open Golf Championship in just a moment. And as you see, as we return to beautiful Paulus Rawl, Jack Nicklaus has a three-shot lead on Arnold Palmer, a four-shot lead on Dean Beeman, Don January, and Billy Casper. Fourth round play being completed. This is the 67th Open. It has uh, always gained worldwide attention in the past 20, 30, or 40 years, and it'll get more today because via the satellite, live and in color, the people in Great Britain, in Ireland, will be seeing it live and in color. And as, as you, you remember yesterday, we had Henry Longhurst as one of our colleagues. He today again is covering the 17th hole and in a few moments he will be orienting his home folks all about Baldus Roll and we know you'll enjoy hearing him tell them all about it. Right now back out to Jim McKay. Thank you Chris. Arnold Palmer addressing his birdie putt on the 13th hole. He said it's about a 20 footer. There have only been three birdies so far on this hole today. Arnold looking at it from the side. There's the huge sign in back of him right here, Jack. So Jack Nichols has plenty of supporters in this gallery, too. Palmer, three shots down. Stood over that one a long time, didn't he? And it's short. So Arnold will have to 
settle for a par four here. And remember, Jack Nicholas has about a three-footer for a birdie three that could put him four shots in front. With five holes to play. So Palmer gets his par. Jim. Yes, Byron. We were discussing yesterday, you know, about uh, Palmer being such a bold putter. And uh, he hasn't been bold. He's apparently not hitting his putt the way he'd like to because he's left many of them short in this uh, tournament so far. Jack Nicholas has sure put his game together at exactly the right moment, hasn't he, uh, Byron? Yes, he really has. He's uh, been doing a lot of work on his game. He's been driving badly until he came here for this championship, but he's really played beautifully here. Well, that minus two could change to minus three if this putt goes in. Heard a little roar there. Don January picked up a bird. He's still in it. There's the birdie three for Jack Nicholas. He is three under par for the day for the championship, and he leads on O'Connor by four shots with five holes to go. And now, as Chris indicated, we're going to be joined by the British Broadcasting Company live on the satellite broadcasting to England, Wales, Scotland, and to Ireland. Gives you some idea of the tremendous interest in this tournament all around the world. Now let's go to our colleague from Britain, Henry Longhurst. Well now, welcome to Bolter's Roll, one of the oldest and most highly esteemed clubs in the whole of the United States at 5.30 on this fine afternoon. And there's the score, look. Jack Nicholas, three under, four ahead of Arnold Palmer, and of Billy Casper, the reigning champion. They started this morning with young Marty Fleckman, whom you'll remember coming over to Sandwich for the Walker Cup and also playing at Paul Me in the amateur, leading the entire field by one. One ahead of the three great men of golf, Casper, Palmer, and Nicholas. And Fleckman faded away, and Nicholas was shot ahead out in 31. There's the clubhouse of this beautiful club. And I think as you see the pictures of this course, you may well be reminded of Wentworth on a fine day when the people are all out in their shirt sleeves. This is Bolter's Roll's fifth Open Championship. The first was won by a Scotsman, Willie Anderson. And if you remember, in the north of England, the first Ryder Cup match to be played in England at Moortown at Leeds, you may remember Johnny Farrell. He's been a member, uh, professional at this club for 32 years, but we'll stop that now and go straight back and there's Palmer, four behind now, Nicholas having just got a birdie three. Five to play. Nicholas, four ahead. And that's just in the rough, but lying perfectly well. There they come, Nicholas and Palmer paired together for the second day run. Huge crowds naturally following them, and this time it's Nicholas's day. Now here's Palmer launching into it in slow motion. As popular a figure at home as he is here. Now, we'll ask Byron for comments on Palmer. Watch how much he turns his body. Shoulders turn, facing down the fairway. Hand, left foot off the ground again, as we'd said. The left knee in toward the right, and then a very strong lead with the left side into the ball. You can see the muscles in his right arm there as he's getting coming down into the hitting area. The hips turn out of the way so his hands can release and get the great power that he has. You see the hands releasing just as they come in contact with the ball. Then his head does not come up until after the swing, after the club has passed that ball. What a strong swing this man has. Over to Bill Fleming, and the 15. Okay, thank you very much, Henry. Uh, this is Marty Fleckman, the young man who has amazed everybody in the golf world by uh, 
uh, leading this tournament at two different points. At the end of the first round, he had 67. At the end of the third round, he led by a stroke. However, he is now five over for the tournament. But what a marvelous display of golf he's made. This is on the 13th hole. And I believe uh, Jim McKay can probably see it up there a little better than we can. Yes, Bill, this is the 13th hole. The twosome of Casper and Fleckman coming up here. Bill Casper tied with Arnold Palmer for second place at the moment. One over the defending champion. Billy hit a fine shot. You see it off to the left of the flag stick. And now here's Arnold Palmer on the 14th hole. 14th rough, Arnold Palmer, having come up and surveyed the shot, now goes back to execute it. Many, many golfers have been in this right rough, and it, it isn't really that bad, is it, Byron? No, they're staying to the right because there is a lot of trouble to the left, and if they're in, or even in the left edge of the fairway, why, you have to play over a trap to the green. But from this right side, this completely open shot to the green. There you see Arnold Palmer's record in the open in recent years, going back to 1960, which was the only time that he won it. Since then, as you know, he has lost three playoffs. The second shot on this far four hole, the 14th, trailing Jack Nicholas by four, four shots. He must be very bold now. And there he is on the putting surface. He will have a big long one for that birdie. Here is Don January on the 16th hole, a par three, putting for his par, and making it something that he's hanging in there. And now back on the 14th fairway again, this is Jack Nicklaus. This is the leader. The man who also has just won this championship once, and he did it in a playoff with Arnold Palmer. Again, watch the grace and power of this swing. You saw it right in this exact position yesterday. There it is. Jack does not appear to be unpleased, and he shouldn't. Birdie territory again for Jack Nicklaus. He may be watching one of the great rounds of U.S. Open golf. There you see the IBM statistics on these two great golfers. Drives on fairway for the tournament. Palmer has had four more on the fairway than has Nicklaus. However, greens in regulation. Jack has hit two more than Arnold has. And it shows that those beautiful, powerful, graceful second shots, as we just saw, have been doing a great job for Jack. We'll be back with more of the action here at beautiful Baldwin Roll Golf Club in Springfield, New Jersey, after this message. We return again to Baldwin Roll, the U.S. Open, Jim McKay reporting from the 14th hole. There you see the graphic of it, this par four, where you must hit a fine tee shot to the right side of the fairway, as Byron Nelson indicated, over that trap and then hit up to the green. Both Palmer and Nicholas have gotten to the green. Palmer will putt first for his birdie three, a very long one, about 40 or 45 feet, would you say, Byron? Yes, that is a real long putt from there. These greens are wonderful, but they have a lot, as we've stated before, little undulating mounds and rows in them that are very difficult to pick the exact line, even though you may roll it just exactly as you want to. And here is Arnold Patton. By the way, those of you who are watching and listening in England, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland, we know you're not seeing it in color, but be patient. It won't be long. The BBC will be bringing you these great events in color as well as on the satellite. Continuous putting rule in effect here. So Arnold puts out for his par four on the 14th hole. Now Jack Nicholas will have his birdie attempt, and it's a much more makeable one than Arnold had. Nicholas three under on today's round, three under for the championship. You know he's got just an outside shot, a little bit better than that at Ben Hogan's record of 276. Byron. Yes, uh, I don't imagine he's thinking about that yet, but he certainly could do it the way he's going today. Just a year ago, of course, Arnold Palmer seemed to have a new U.S. Open record wrapped up at the end of 13 holes. Remember? Yes, I remember quite well. <laughs> I'm sure he would like to get it. 
Kit Nichols makes this putt, he will be in effect tie with Hogan's record at four under par. Par on this course, remember, is 70, or 280 for the 72 holes. Remember, the last two holes are par fives. Those are Jack Nichols's meat. Sure are. This young man in just his sixth year as a professional has won everything there is to win. The Open, the Masters, the PGA, the British Open. One of only four players to win all of those, and there it is. A smiling Jack Nicholas stretches his lead to five shots over Arnold Palmer and Bill Casper and moves one shot ahead of Ben Hogan's U.S. Open record. Here at this most difficult Baldus Roll Golf Club in Springfield, New Jersey, action on 16. Let's go to Keith Jackson. Thank you very much, Jim McKay. This is a par three hole, 200 and... 14 yards in total distance, though today they are playing the hole a little shorter, and uh, we'll be carrying the ball from tee to green about 185 yards, which makes it a five-iron shot for some, a four-iron shot for some, and now that the air has grown quite heavy as the clouds have become thicker and we hear in the distance uh, the roll of thunder, so the rain clouds are in the offing, and it's become quite heavy. So we're anticipating the leaders of the tournament here on this par three hole. But right now, let's follow them more closely with Bill Fleming on 15. And as they walk up to the 15th tee, which is back in a little knoll of trees, they look out to this beautiful fairway and this tremendous crowd has broken all existing records. Up until today for three rounds, over 61,000 fans and a good 20 to 25,000 more here today. The old record was 74,000 set last year at Olympic, and that included the playoff. It couldn't have been more electrifying the way this lead has jockeyed back and forth. And, of course, with the popularity of Marty Fleckman, an amateur, leading it at two different stages, uh, it really has uh, developed into some great proportions. And now, as you look back into that area, 419 yards away from the green itself, Jack Nicklaus, one of the game's greatest hitters, Try to split the middle of the fairway so that he can have a about a six iron into the green. Byron Nelson may wish to comment on this particular swing because he can really let it out. He really has lots of power. Watch how high his hands go. And he really moves through that, releasing his hand for the lower part of the swing. It looks like it's gone over to the golfer's left and it May, it has carried the trap, which is very fortunate. And there is a case where uh, the big hitter gets a great advantage here because uh, one not quite as strong would be in a very difficult spot. However, that is in the rough on the left side and has carried the bunker easily by 40 yards. Might open the door a little bit for Arnold. He made a birdie here to take the lead away from Jack Nicklaus in the second round. Oh, what a shot that one is. Perfect position on the right side of the fairway, and Arnold will have uh, certainly not more than a six iron into this green, which is elevated as you can see. Now let's take a look in color slow motion of the swing. Watch that club has stays low of the ground as it goes back. A lot of turn the left side, weight moves over onto the right. Left heel comes off the ground, hands real high at the top of the backswing. That's where he gets his tremendous power. Now he has large, strong legs. Watch how he uses these as he comes through, how he stays down to the ball. Head down, arms, hands releasing in the lower part of the swing. Left side moving out of the way so the hands and the club can go straight through on the line down the fairway. Real high finish because the hands have reached a high position at the top of his backswing. Nicholas, with rounds of 71, 67, and 72, turned the front side today in an unbelievable 31. And he now has a five-stroke lead over Arnold Palmer, Billy Casper, and Don January. The 1967 U.S. Open Golf Championship from Baldus Roll Golf Club continues in just a moment. This is Bill Fleming reporting from the 15th at the lower course at Baldus Roll, Springfield, New Jersey, scene of the 67th United States Open Golf Championship. And we at ABC would like to express our sympathy to... Julius Boros, who withdrew from this tournament today because of the death of his mother. Julius has won this tournament 
twice before. Now Arnold Palmer looking over his shot to the green, and Jack Nicholas is in the rough and will shoot first. And this is where the power of Byron Nelson really tells, because in this very tight rough over there that's five inches or so high, Nicholas will have to come through that ball with that great strength that he has. And uh, he's, t he's chosen his club and will hit before Arnold does. What yes. do you imagine it is? I would think he'd be going with an eight iron from where he is because the ball's going to fly a little bit out of this rough because the must be some grass get between the face of the club and the ball. It will not, uh, so he'd get a little fly, what we call a flying shot out of this. He's coming up to an elevated green, and the pin position is in a good spot for him because it's on the back side, on the right side, and he has uh, a chance to roll it up should it bounce when it hits out the front of the green. Good high shot. Tremendous divot he took. And up it comes. From there, I would say a splendid shot. It's about uh, 30 feet from the pin. Incidentally, uh, speaking of records, which Jim McKay was earlier with Jack Nicklaus now, if he pars out tying the record set by uh, Ben Hogan at 276, uh, Nicklaus himself set the amateur record of 282 when he finished second to Arnold Palmer in 1960. And if uh, Marty Fleckman can shoot 72 today, he would break that. So that's something to be thinking about. Just did miss the trap on the golfer's right. He is in the little uh, fringe there, as you can see, the little rough that's uh, about two inches high, and the ball sitting up very, very well. We're proud here at ABC Sports to be bringing you both the Winter and Summer Olympic Games next year. 1968 promises to be one of the great Olympic years, and we're really looking forward to traveling to Grenoble in France in February to bring you live and in color via the satellite all the color and excitement of the Winter Olympic Games. Then in October 1968, we'll be in Mexico City, also live and in color, for the spectacular 19th Summer Olympic Games. Our coverage of the 1968 Olympics will be the most complete in the history of television, so don't forget ABC or Olympic Network in 1968. Great roar and fine applause goes up for Jack Nicholas coming up here. He's had truly a spectacular round. He finished the front side in 31, and he's had two birdies here on the back nine and big smile to the crowd here while he's looking over his putt let's go over to Jim McKay okay Bill because this is Bill Casper here and if he makes this birdie putt he could move into undisputed possession of second place and remember second prize money is fifteen thousand dollars here first prize thirty thousand in the US Open Casper the defending champion of course winner of the dramatic playoff with Arnold Palmer last year About a 30 footer here. But Casper is still one of the great putters of the game. And that long, just a, about like everybody else has been on this 14th hole. And Bill now needs this for a par four. Second leading money winner of all time, just behind Arnold Palmer, just ahead of Jack Nicholas. Bill started the day at even par. He's now one over, headed for a round of 71, should he par in from here. He gets the par on the 14th hole. Stay at one over, tied with Arnold Palmer for second place. Now back to the 14th, 15th, excuse me, and Bill Fleming. And this is Jack Nicholas, both at long range and close up. This is about uh, 25 or 30 footer. Uh, pin. Byron, you were out here looking over with us earlier. It's in a very flat spot on the green, which is an unusual thing to find on the 15th green, and there's so many undulations in it. Yes, but he has to come up over this crown a little bit before he gets there. It's a difficult putt to judge the exact distance. You can see his putter sitting right by the ball there, a white putter against a white ball. I'm sure he'd like to make it, but he wants to get real close from that distance. <laughs> Oh, fine putt. Not more than about nine inches from the cup. 
You look it over, however, because you realize every one of these uh, is so important. He's four under par for the tournament. If he pars on out, he'd be at 276. A fine par four here on the difficult 15th, the second most difficult hole on the golf course. Now Arnold Palmer has a little pitch shot here. Remember, uh, Byron, a year ago, uh, they developed that little bump shot with the with the wedge because of the rough at Olympic? I surely do. This one is just about the same thing. They had that. This grass is not quite as long, but he'll have to hit down into it and kind of pop it out onto the green. He almost sank one of these. Notice how the firm grip he uses on this. That's a beautiful shot. Just slides by. By about two and a half feet. So this will be for his par four. Arnold led this tournament by one stroke at the halfway mark. And this is the way they've done as far as uh, one putt holes in the tournament. Nicholas 16, Palmer 15. And look at today, Nicholas 7 out of 14. Oh, that's an incredible percentage. Well, when you realize that that round, Nicholas bogeyed the second hole. He birdied three, four, five, bogeyed six, birdied seven, birdied eight. He bogeyed the tenth, and he birdied 13 and 14. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven birdies today. Arnold Palmer's been playing very steadily, and this will be for a par four. Very little break at all. And it's a fine par four for Arnold Palmer. Remains one over par. Five strokes off the pace. And let's go to Chris Schenkel at 18. Thank you very much, Bill Fleming. The 18th hole from high up. One of our shots coming from a suspended camera and cameraman on a 200-foot crane moving down this fairway, which dog legs to the golfer's left on the elevated tee. It's a par five, as Don January, who is one over par for the tournament. Don giving it the long look. And is on the left side of the fairway, and just in the rough. On the left side of this hole, you not only have rough trees, but also water. We'll be back here in a moment, right now, back out to Keith Jackson. Here on the 16th, Jack Nicklaus selecting a club as we look from behind the green. They'll carry the ball tee to green on this hole, about 185 yards today. And for our friends in England and Ireland who are watching for the first time, let me say there is no fairway on this par three hole. As you see here, stretched to its ultimate, it's 214 yards. It's playing a little shorter than that today. Jack Nicholas, who is the pursued at the moment, he is four under par through 15 holes today. He is four under par for the tournament, has a brilliant round of seven birdies and three bogeys going. He's trying to break the U.S. Open record. He is being pursued by Arnold Palmer, Billy Casper, and Don January. And Jack Nicholas shot here on this par three. He is just on the front edge of the green. And Jack will have a putt of approximately 22 feet at the hole. The ball will break a little bit from right to left. Now it's Arnold Palmer. Golf's most dynamic and dramatic figure. And on this day, Arnold has not been able to mount one of his famous charges. The gallery, huge. The attendance record has been broken for a U.S. Open. For the first three days, 70,613. Total attendance will be probably better than 90,000 for the four days. Arnold Palmer's shot, he has hooked it a little bit. Hits pin high, sets quickly, rolls down into a little swale here in the green, and Arnold Palmer will be putting from about 19 feet. So he is inside of Jack Nicklaus. With a pause in the action here at Baltusrol Golf Club in Springfield, New Jersey, we'll pause for these words.
This is the fifth United States Open Championship to be contested here at Baltusrol Golf Club. The last victory by Ed Fergal in 1954, 1936 on the upper course, Tony Monero. This is the lower course. The final hole is down January with a key shot, a wood from the rough over water. And he is in a battle for second place, tied for it at the moment, and he just makes the rough, short of one of the fine five sand traps that guard this oval green. There you'll see the shot you'll have. It's in the sand trap to the left as we look on, uh, just beyond the trap and just into the, the rough. Right, Chris. He, uh, he does not have a very difficult pitch from there. The pin is placed very uh, nicely on the green. He have about a 40-yard pitch over this uh, trap, and just in this four-inch rub. Now let's see more of this 7,015-yard course at 16 Keith Jackson. Thank you, Chris. You're looking at Jack Nicholas. Jack paced it off. I counted the steps. He is more like 26 feet from the hole as he paced it off. He's got to come up out of a swale, and he'll have to go up over a rather sharp break in the green, and then once the ball is up and rolling, it'll slide from right to left. It's a very slick green, but it has been a rewarding green today for the putt that is struck just right. Jack Nicklaus trying to win his second U.S. Open championship. He's got it by the hole, and the ball broke more than Jack thought it would, so it rolls by, by about 20 inches. He'll have a tap in here, and from where he will putt this ball, or he'll strike this putt, the ball, unless sharply struck, is liable to slide to his right. He's got some work left right here. Jack four under and leading the tournament. Arnold Palmer, Billy Casper, the defending champion, and Don January, all at plus one for the tournament. The leader in the clubhouse right now is Lee Trevino at 283. On our split screen, you just saw Billy Casper's third shot on 15 as he chipped up near the pen. You're looking at Jack Nicholas putting for a par three here at 16. And he slides it in the left side of the cup. So Jack walks away from 16. Arnold Palmer now will be putting. Jack with a par three here. Jack Nicholas pars in on 17 and 18. He will equal Ben Hogan's record of 276, which is the U.S. Open record set at the Riviera Country Club in Los Angeles, California. But 17 and 18 are both par fives. And as Byron Nelson pointed out a while ago, they're tailor-made for a big guy like Jack. Arnold Palmer, putting for a birdie. He's still four under, coming to 17. Nicholas is hitting the ball so precisely that he's backing up every iron shot. Palmer and Casper are out of it, but Arnold is still making good golf shots. That's his third to the 17th. Short. Well, at least he's human. A birdie by Arnold, but too light. The 18th hole, seen from ABC's giant crane behind the green. The one thing Nicholas wants to avoid is the water on the golfer's left. A birdie would give him that scoring record. But Jack is concerned only about winning. He's going to use an iron off the tee and aim it to the right, away from the water. That's too far right. Into the gallery. A television cable rising out of the ground and a cable reel interfere with Jack's stance and swing. They are obstructions. So Jack's entitled to a drop within two club lengths without penalty. The ball rolled nearer the hole, so Jack is obliged to drop again.
All right, that time. And eight iron back into the fairway. But Jack hit it fat. Out comes the one iron again. Up, up, and on the green. On this par five hole, Nicholas has used a one iron, an eight iron, and a one iron again. Now, the open is won. All that remains is to learn whether Jack will tie or break Hogan's open scoring record. Two putts for 276. One putt for 275. There it is, the lowest score ever made in the United States Open Championship. What a performance today. A 65 with eight birdies, nine threes, and a two on his card. Jack receives the prize check from USGA President Ward Fauché. And then he remembers he's a father. So he gives the check to the mother, so all those lovely little children can help their daddy celebrate another happy Father's Day.